welcome back everyone to another video and today we have with us the mediatek x20 courtesy of seed studio this 200 dollar development boards comes in the 96 boards form factor with all the bells and whistles but before we head into specs performance and features let's take a look at the unboxing the box itself looked more like a box for a new smartphone rather than a development board. In other words, it was looking pretty darn fancy. On two of the sides, we have the MediaTek branding and on the other two sides, we have branding for, for Archer Mind 96 boards and Lenaro. At the bottom, we find two warranty void if removed stickers. For some reason, maybe they didn't give a crap about the board being destroyed. Anyways, once we are through that, we are welcomed by a quick start guide which lists most of the components on the board and the specs. With that said, the board is powered by MediaTek Helio X20 SoC which has a 10 core CPU consisting of 3 cluster. The most power efficient cluster has quad Cortex A53 cores clocked at 1.4 GHz, a balanced cluster consisting of a quad Cortex A53 cores clocked at 1.85 GHz and lastly the most powerful cluster containing dual Cortex A72 cores clocked up to 2.3 GHz and that was straight up the most complicated spec sheet I have ever seen for an SoC. It also supports a Mali T880 MP4 GPU which is quad core uh, because of the MP4 branding. Apart from that we have 2 GB of LPDDR3 RAM, 8 GB of eMMC onboard storage and on the connectivity side we have dual band Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.0 and GPS. Once we are done with that piece of paper, we see another compartment that houses the actual board covered in some ESD protective packaging. We are also provided with four standoff screws, which I thought were a pretty nice add on. However, I was not provided with the power supply. Had I not had the power supply from the Heike 960, this review would have been very much delayed. But since it is not the part of the actual board, I will not take it against the X20. Once the dev board is out of its protective package, we can clearly see the sock and RAM in a package in package config. On the left of the sock, we have the eMMC, and on the right, we have the power management IC. On the extreme left, we have the Wi Fi, Bluetooth, and GPS chipset all in one single package. So now it's time to add the standoffs and boot it for the first time. And yes, the pre-installed version of Android boots in a rather weird little box portrait mode, but a quick update to the latest version of Android from the 96 boots website and everything works as expected. Talking about Android, the only version available for this is Android 6 with kernel 3.18. Uh, and the latest release was back in November of 2016. But that said, the full source code is available to download and compile and everything about AOSP is pretty much well documented. Before we get into the benchmark, let's take a look at the GPIO. I wasn't able to find much documentation to access the GPIO on the low speed header. However, uh, the onboard LEDs are programmable and can be accessed via ADB from Android. Let's take a look. Now 
finally let's get to the benchmarks i will be comparing the x20 with the hikey 960 as both of them lie in the same price point the x20 coming at 200 dollars and the hikey 960 coming in at 239 dollars and both of the prices are taken from seed studio at the time of recording this video now that i'm done feeling like lannis tech tips of the single board computers let's take a look at the series of benchmarks uh, that would be done against the Heike 960 and air cooled version of a X20 with an aftermarket heatsink and fan added on separately. Uh, and I did this because the Heike 960 already had a heatsink pre installed or in the box. So, uh, just for fair comparisons, we do have the air cooled version of the X20. First, we look at Geekbench with a single core CPU performance. The Heike 960 tops with 1731 points followed by the air cooled X20 at 1637 points and very close by by the stock X20 with 1610 points. Next we have a look at the Geekbench multi CPU performance with air cooled X20 marginally beating the Heike 960 at 4759 points followed by the Heike 960 at 4662 points and the stock X20 at just 3559 points. Here we can clearly see the significant performance boost due to enhanced cooling. Then we have the Antutu benchmark where the Heike 960 takes the cake with a huge uh, 113,449 points followed by the air cooled X20 with half of that at 67,247 points. And finally we have the stock X20 with a mere 56,212 points. On the more graphics oriented side of benchmarks with Antutu 3D we once again see the Heike 960 dominate the scoreboard with 13 and 22 FPS followed by the air cooled X20 with 4 and 4 and the stock X20 with 3 and 4 FPS. Then we have 3D Mark Slingshot Extreme with the Heike 960 at 1333 points followed by the air cooled X20 at 651 points and the stock X20 at 622 points and finally we have the GFX bench with the Heike 960 at 11 FPS in car chase, 18 FPS in Manhattan 3.1 and 47 FPS in T-Rex and in this benchmark both the air cooled and stock X20 had the exact same results at 6.8, 15 and 35 FPS in car chase, Manhattan 3.1 and T-Rex respectively. Also keep in mind that the graphic benchmarks were done at 720p on the X20 as the EOSP defaults at that resolution compared to the 1080p on the Heike 960. So it is fairly obvious that the Heike 960 has a very powerful GPU. To conclude the benchmarks, overall the Heike 960 dominated the X20 air cooled or not. Thanks to the higher number of top tier cores as well as the Heike 960 having a more powerful uh, Cortex A73 cores as opposed to a uh, Cortex A72 on the X20. On the GPU side of things the Heike 960 has a more powerful G71 MP8 octa core GPU clocked at more than 1 GHz as opposed to the X20 quad core Mali T880 MP4 clocked at just 720 MHz. The only one exception being Geekbench multi-core benchmarks which gets affected by too much heat generated on the Heike 960 and all of the CPU cores being mostly underclocked. Since both of the Heike 960 and the X20 are based on the 96 boards platform, the basic layout and feature set are almost the same. Uh, so let's take a look at some of the features that makes them unique. The Heike 960 has more RAM at 3 GB compared to 2 GB on the X20 and more storage at 32 GB compared to just 8 GB on the X20. Apart from that, the Heike 960 has USB 3 host 
compared to USB 2 on the X20 and also supports PCI Gen 3 via M.2 uh, which is not present again on the MediaTek X20 platform but the X20 has the exception of having an inbuilt GPS receiver. So till now it seems that the Hikey 960 is the better one out there but there is more than what meets the eye. There are certain advantages that the X20 has over uh, the 960 which makes it a very much better competitor. One of the main advantage is that the X20 is a fully developed and stable platform whereas the Hikey 960 is under constant development on the operating system side of things. The kernel as well as the Android branch uh, is under constant development and updated regularly. At this moment the Hikey 960 is only supported on the uh, master branch of Android open source project and it is not a very stable branch. It is full of bugs and the features keep on changing and the kernel is under heavy development as well. So the X20 is much better from a operating system stability point of view. Next up is the tri-cluster CPU design of the Helio X20 which allows for a more granular control over performance and efficiency making a bit more power efficient solution than the Hikey 960 along with generating a lot less amount of heat and that explains why there was a heat sink included with the Hikey 960 and there was no heat sink included with the MediaTek X20 and as the performance benchmarks aren't that different. So at the end of the day, the X20 is a pretty decent development board, although it could have been 20 to $50 cheaper and then it probably would have made a bit more sense. I know this video sort of converted into a Hikey 960 versus a MediaTek X20 battle rather than a review, but what is a review anyways without a competitive benchmark. So I hope you all enjoyed this video and thank you so much for liking, commenting and subscribing and I will see you all in the next one. Thank you.